If you are a student of scripture, or at least spend any time kind of messing around in there, one of the things that you know is that the Gospels are fundamentally different. That while John is its own thing, its own style, its own kind of artistic way of writing, Matthew, Mark, and Luke are very similar. As a matter of fact, we refer to them as the parallel Gospels because we can literally lay them next to each other and look at how the stories, the similar stories unfold. But when we do that, one of the things that we begin to notice is that even when all three of those Gospels have the same story, they often have very different details. And sometimes, like with our story today from Matthew, their story only appears in one Gospel. And so we're left with a bit of a quandary. What do we do with sacred scripture that sometimes simply does not match? Sometimes it almost seems to disagree with itself. Now, for some people, that turns them away from Scripture because there's this thing that we need to understand about the difference between truth and fact. And again, this story is a great example. We need to understand the difference between truth and fact and what difference it makes and when and how it makes a difference. Now, most of us were taught that this story was about as Maureen talked about earlier, about three kings from the Orient. We're told that they were probably astrologers because they were one of the few people that noticed the star in the sky. Legend has it they came from Persia, and if you were a Sunday school goer, you may even have learned their three names. But none of that is in Scripture. In the story today, we are told wise men came from the east. We, it doesn't say there were only three of them. We assume there were because there are three gifts. But it could have been five kings or maybe 15 kings or one poor guy carrying all three gifts by himself. We don't know because it doesn't say. And it certainly doesn't give us the names of the magi, but we have added that to the story because it helps the story come alive. But is it true? Well, here we go. Is it true or is it fact? Because while the facts may not line up with legend, does it really matter if there was one king or three or 15? Does it really change anything in our lives if we really don't know where they came from or know their names? Because those facts simply don't change anything. But what changes everything, what makes all the difference in the world, is the truth of this story. It's the piece of the story that resonates deep in our bones that helps us to know and understand God differently and more openly and gives us a different experience of something. And we know that it has meaning. And so we know it is true. And what's true about this story at least for me, has nothing to do with how many kings there were or where they came from, and definitely not their names. But what is true is the experience that this story tells us about. That there were these men who saw something in the sky that they could not ignore. That they were seekers that they saw something in nature that compelled them to look deeper. And because they were seekers, they couldn't let it go, and so they followed it. They looked more deeply. They went after it. And when they did that, it led them to God in Jesus. And the story tells us that after they had that experience, they didn't just keep on looking. They didn't drop off the gifts and keep going. They stopped, and they realized they didn't need to look any further, and so they went home. And the reason, that, the thing that's really important about that, about that very sentence, though, is that in the original Greek, the word that we translate as either they went home by another road or by another way, 
actually is a word that we use for behavior. And so the truth of this story is that these people, these men, had this encounter of God, and through it they had an epiphany, an aha. They had this deep and profound and true experience of God, and they were changed. And so when they went home, they went home differently. That is the truth of the story that that we who seek God often look in the wrong places. But when we see something that draws us in, our only job is to respond and to follow it deeper until we have that encounter with God and we know we will have it, we know we have had it, when we are changed by it. But that's not the only truth in the story, unfortunately. Because if we were to continue reading this gospel before this chapter even finishes, it also tells us of the story of the slaughtering of the innocents, that King Herod was so afraid in his jealousy that he ordered the murder of every male child, two and younger. Now, what are we supposed to do with that? Because the truth here, the truth this invites us to wrestle with is that Although the Messiah came into the world, it didn't change the world. The Messiah was born into a world of pain and suffering, and the pain and the suffering continues. That the Messiah didn't come as some king or conquering hero, he came as an innocent, a baby. And that God still comes as the neighbor, even then, who lost a child to Herod's torture, that God, the Messiah, still comes to us in the neighbor who is burdened and and layered under a blanket of grief, who struggles with their child's addiction, who wonders what to do about the fact that they think their spouse is having an affair, who is afraid that they're going to lose their job and they can't feed their families. This is the world the Messiah came into. This is the world we still have. Because I think we've missed the point. We who are waiting for Messiah to come in with a magic wand and make everything better leaves us out of the conversation. And the truth of this story is that the Messiah did not come into the world to change the world. The Messiah came into the world to change us. And it is through those moments, those epiphanies, those experiences of God that draw us deeper that ask us to change, even if it's just a little bit. That this is where the God with us, in us, as us, is the real truth of this story. That God does not come into the world to change the world, that God comes into the world to change us. And that truth makes all the difference. Amen.